Indonesia's national currency, the rupiah, is amongst the world's most important. The Indonesian economy is bound to become one of the largest, projected to have a GDP of 9.1 trillion US dollars, surpassing Japan, many of the large economies in the European area, and just behind India, the US, and China. These make the country's rupiah to have global importance. However, there is just one problem. The Indonesian rupiah is very, very weak. And it is not just weak in recent years due to the interest rates in the Federal Reserve of the United States. It has been dropping every single year, every decade. Way back in the early 1970s, the Indonesian rupiah was pegged to the dollar. One US dollar was equivalent to 415 Indonesian rupiah. That may seem a lot for a single US dollar, yet today, one US dollar is equivalent of over 15,000 Indonesian rupiah. That is a huge increase since the 70s. This brings us to the most important question of today's video, just why is the Indonesian rupiah so weak? What caused it to drop massively since the 70s? And what role will Indonesia's rupiah play in the future? To begin, let us discuss the historical account of the rupiah. The Indonesian rupiah was first introduced in 1946, during the early years of Indonesia's fight for independence. The currency's name derives from the Indian rupee, reflecting Indonesia's historical ties with India. The first significant event that impacted the rupees is in the 1960s. Specifically, in 1965, inflation rose to 635 percent. Political changes in 1966 brought economic policy reforms, including a stabilization program. This program included debt relief, stringent bank reserves, and lifting import restrictions. But despite these efforts and the introduction of a new rupiah, which removed the old one and replaced it with a new one, seeing a one new rupiah the equivalent of 1,000 old rupiah, the rupiah still continued to suffer devaluations. In later years, especially in the late 1990s, it saw a major decline. The so-called 1997 Asian financial crisis saw a huge impact on Indonesia and the rupiah, along with countries and currencies in the region. Along with its impact, there was also widespread social unrest and ultimately contributed to the fall of Indonesia's long-serving president, Suharto. This saw the Indonesian rupiah, which was 2,600 rupiah to a dollar, fall massively to over 11,000 rupiah to a dollar. Take note that this occurred in just a few years. It even fell further to 14,000 to a dollar. Eventually, the rupiah did take some ground, but it never truly had its exchange rate go back to where it once was. Since then, the rupiah has been steady. The country's stabilization program has been working, and the rupiah would hover between 10,000 to 16,000 to a dollar. While there were bumps along the way, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, which saw the rupiah rise to over 16,000, the rupiah is still stabilized, at the very least compared to the Asian financial crisis. Now that we have a quick understanding of the currency's history, we can now move on and discuss the factor that is stabilizing it. The most important thing for someone to understand a currency is the issuer. The issuer in Indonesia is the central bank, which is locally known as Bank Indonesia. The role of Bank Indonesia plays a crucial role in the movement of the currency. They have proactively managed the rupiah's exchange rate in response to global economic uncertainties, such as anticipated hikes in US interest rates and economic frailty in China. For instance, the central bank raised the benchmark interest rate to 6%, aiming to stabilize the rupiah exchange rate and manage the potential inflationary impacts of imported goods. These allowed the Indonesian rupiah to stabilize compared to the US dollar. It is important to know that the US dollar's value increases when the Federal Reserve increases the interest rate. The Federal Reserve is the central bank of the United States, so when they increase their interest rate, the US dollar follows. This is because the higher the interest rate, the more attractive assets are, which in turn brings in foreign investments. On the other hand, for Bank Indonesia to fight against the increasing US dollar, they must also raise the interest rate, which, as we noted earlier, rose to 6.42% from 3.5% a few months ago. Now, it is also important to understand the role of these interest rates. The reason why governments have been increasing interest rates is to help ease inflation. However, the higher the interest rate of one country, the lower its economic growth, because borrowing costs also go up. Businesses will struggle to fund growth, in simpler words. 
Furthermore, Bank Indonesia also has monetary instruments. Recently, the bank launched new monetary instruments named Bank Indonesia Foreign Currency Securities SVBI, and Bank Indonesia Foreign Currency Sukuk SUKBI. These instruments are designed to strengthen the rupiah exchange rate by drawing in foreign capital and bolstering the domestic financial market. The launch of SVBI and SUKBI is expected to increase liquidity in the financial market and improve market resilience, thereby supporting the rupiah's stability and mitigating the impacts of global economic uncertainties on the currency. But it is important to understand that the Bank Indonesia isn't merely the sole factor. One of the most significant contributors to the rupiah's value is commodity prices. Energy prices play a huge role in Indonesia's economy. As an energy exporter, it benefits from soaring crude prices and other commodity prices. So, the surge in prices for major Indonesian export commodities like palm oil and coal strengthens the country's trade balance and contributes to the strengthening of the rupiah. For instance, the rising commodity prices have provided a buffer for the rupiah, helping it avoid steep losses and even leading to slight appreciation in some instances. This positive effect on the rupiah is due to the boost in export revenues from these commodities. Now that we have an understanding of these facets, let us dive into the advantages and disadvantages of having a weak currency. The first advantage is that a weak rupiah often results in higher exports. A weaker currency can make a country's exports cheaper and more competitive in the international market. This can stimulate domestic industries involved in export, potentially leading to job creation and an increase in overall economic activity. Higher exports also contribute to an improvement in the current account deficit, especially important for countries struggling with competitiveness. Secondly, it can also increase tourism, stimulate economic growth, and make monetary policy flexible. The disadvantages, however, is that a weaker currency can lead to inflation as the cost of imports rises. This includes both consumer goods and raw materials, potentially leading to demand pull inflation. Over time, this might also reduce the incentive for domestic firms to cut costs, possibly impacting long-term productivity. On top of that, citizens of a country with a weaker currency may find it more expensive to travel abroad, reducing their global purchasing power. Likewise, rapid and large devaluations can deter international investors and lead to capital flight as the real value of their holdings in the local currency diminishes. This can have a destabilizing effect on the financial markets and the economy at large. So, having a weak currency has two sides, which is something that the central bank must balance. But now finally, before we end this video, we need to discuss the future of Indonesia's rupiah. Does it really hold value in the long run as a future economic powerhouse? Well, the future of Indonesia's rupiah is obviously promising. It will ride the waves of the country's economic growth. If by 2045, Indonesia does become the fourth largest economy, then its currency will undoubtedly gain significant traction in the global market. However, the journey to this status is not without its challenges. One key factor in the rupiah's future will be Indonesia's continued economic diversification, moving beyond a reliance on commodity exports to a more varied and robust economic structure will be critical. This diversification can provide more stability to the rupiah as it will be less susceptible to global commodity price fluctuations. In terms of its global role, as Indonesia's economy grows, the rupiah could start to play a more influential role in regional trade and finance. This would be particularly true within ASEAN and among other emerging economies. The possibility of the rupiah becoming a more commonly used currency in regional transactions could enhance its global stature. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.